In this video, I'm going to solve the problem of um, building timer.html. This is a, a problem within the JavaScript assignment. And the problem asks um, for a web page with a text box in which the user enters a number of seconds. Uh, there should be a button that when clicked will start the timer. When the timer is started, the, the number of seconds entered by the user will start to count down uh, one second at a time and then reach zero. When the counter reaches zero, that an image is made visible on the page. And we should be able to see the counting down as the timer runs. So if the user enters three, then the web page displays three, then two, then one, then zero, and then the image appears. I should add that. Alright, so let's do that. It's called timer.html. Uh, I'm going to uh, copy an existing file, say um, imagelink.html, and this is called uh, timer. I will edit this with Notepad. So this is timer.html. That's I'm putting that in the title, and here's the um, script tag that starts the um, the block, the element in which uh, we're going to place the JavaScript. And here we have actually just in order we do need to display an image so in fact I'm going to leave this this uh, image element in the in the uh, in the file this is from the last from a previous problem and uh, but what I'm going to do is add a text element so that will be input type equals text uh, ID equals, and we'll call that uh, seconds. So we have we have an input box, and uh, next to the input box, I'll put a break here. Under the input box, there's a uh, a submit button, or just a button rather. So a button. And um, let's uh, let's give that that says something like uh, start. I'll say start the process of counting down. And uh, so here we have, and we'll just have a kind of like a a field descriptor here. So the number of seconds appear in this text box and then there's a start button and under the start button is an image and uh, so on. We don't need mouse over and mouse uh, out, just the, uh, just the image. Let's just see if we got the HTML um, correct. Let's uh, let's take a look at that. This is timer. 
So there's the image, here's the text box, and there's the start button. Okay. Now, what we'll do with the start button is uh, when we click start, we'll run a we'll run a function. Now we won't need this, by the way. That's from the old problem. When the start button is clicked, we will run a function. So we have the the event on click, and we assign it the string. We assign the attribute on click an executable string that should be um, executed when uh, when the user clicks on the button. So we'll call that uh, we'll just call it start. Here's the start button. So there's a function called start. We need to declare that function start. And just to test it, we'll just uh, we'll call alert and we'll pass in a pass in something like um, Z. Take a look at that. Now I need to refresh or reload the page. I click start and there's Z. Okay. So we got that. This is going to start a, a timer and it will start basically start counting down the, uh, from the number of seconds entered by the user. We could put a default value in there. Let's do that. Let's put a default value of, um, of 5. As you can see, five appears in there. Of course, the user can can uh, override that default value. So when start is called, what we'll do is uh, we're going to start. Um, We'll start a process. I think we'll do it like this actually. Start. Um, we can make a start recursive. There's many ways of solving this problem. We'll try it like this. If we if we call start, maybe we'll just call it start. I think we'll do that. And um, We'll have two functions. One is called update, the other one is called start. And uh, when update is called, then we'll pull out the, uh, the seconds from uh, this ID here. So we do document dot uh, get element by ID. We'll pass in the ID of start. This is the this is the uh, the seconds element. That returns uh, an element. Actually, this this is an input. Um, this input element here. So this get element ID passing in start. Uh, oh, sorry, this is not right. This should be seconds. So this returns a reference to the. DOM object that represents this input element and we can call that that uh, reference we can call that the seconds element and uh, once we have that we can test it so if the if the seconds element dot value as you can see 
this element here that we are, have a reference to has an attribute called value. So we can test to see if its value is uh, zero. If the value is zero, then the, the countdown is, um, is complete. So we just uh, display the image. If the, um, if the value is greater than zero, And then um, what we'll do is uh, decrement decrement the um, the seconds decrement the seconds and call update uh, one second. Uh, later. So we want it to be a timer. So let's decrement the seconds. Basically we do um, seconds element dot value. We'll assign it the the value seconds element dot value minus one. And then we uh, need to call update one second later. So we use the what's called the, um, the I think they call it timeout. We call timeout, and uh, we pass in the job a string that's executed and the number of seconds to wait. So we this is a this is a built-in. Um, built-in function. I'm not sure exactly how to call it. I think we just call it like that. So we wait uh, 1,000 milliseconds or one second and then we execute this string and uh, that's simply a call to update. So this should, um, right now that we should have something that counts down, but we need to start the process. That's done here in um, in start, so we need to be. We need to copy this actually. Let's see there. So we're not getting. Uh, we're not getting a result. We could look at the JavaScript console and uh, find out what's going on there. So here there must be some um, some error and uh, let's see if we can get that information from this JavaScript console. I'm using Chrome by the way. We could use uh, another browser as well. Now they have similar um, aids for developing and debugging JavaScript. Timeout is not defined. Oh, so it's, uh, it's it's called something like maybe it's called timer. Maybe it's timer. Is that what it is? Timer. Oh. We'll need to search for that. So the JavaScript timer. So oh, set timeout. That's it. I just couldn't remember it. So this is a uh, set timeout. I believe that's it. Let's see. We'll click start. Four, three, two, one, zero. Good. So the timer is now working. Now we need to display an image when we get to zero. Now this image is already being displayed, so what we'll do there is we'll we'll, um, we'll make it uh, invisible. 
So I believe it's the, the style rule, or what do they call it, a style attribute, visibility, and we'll say hidden. I think that's it, but I'm not sure. Let's uh, try that. Yeah, now it's invisible. Good. So visibility is hidden, and here, when this um, when the timer reaches this point, we want to display the image. So we'll need to have an ID here. I'll call it image. So this image has three attributes, style, ID, and source. So we'll use this uh, this syntax here to display the image. So we have a var which is called a, say an img element. Get element by id image. Once we have that element, we can access its style attribute and within the within its actually it's a collection of style rules and uh, in this collection we'll look at the we'll assign something to the um, the visibility right, I forget what they call this we'll make it visible I believe it's visible let's just guess at that <laughs> And what do they what is this called? This is called the this here. I think, believe that's called a style rule. And uh, this here is a um hmm. I don't remember the terminology. Let me see if I can look that up. Oh, I see now they call it a property, so this would be the property, so visibility here visibility is the property visibility and this is the um, the value assigned to the property and uh, this there's also um, just looking at this page is something called a selector but this is not relevant because we have um, we're we're um, we're applying a style uh, through the uh, through the uh, attribute HTML attribute style so if we were outside of the element and wanted to uh, assign a style to or a style rule to this uh, image element we would then um, need to, um, to specify a selector that that selects or identifies this particular image and then assigns that that style rule to it or assigns this I guess this would be called a style rule this whole perhaps the whole expression here is called a style rule anyway that's um, I don't work with CSS very often so I don't uh, I'm not uh, perfectly fluent in the terminology but if you do work with CSS uh, a lot, you'll end up becoming fluent. And I, and I recommend uh, uh, being precise in your use of, um, of the terminology. Okay, so let's go back to this timer. We hit start. We do a countdown. And the image appears. That's great. So that seems to work. That's in fact uh, what I'm asking for in the assignment. And uh, that's that's it. That's uh, that's how to complete uh, this uh, timer assignment.